Streaming! You love it, I tolerate it. For the past several years, streaming services like Netflix, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, oh, I'm sorry, Max, have become the go-to place for watching everything from the greatest thing ever made by man to generic rom-com starring hot people number 456. While they may continue to dominate the landscape of TV, lately, they've been in this weird gray area with film. Despite these services still releasing movies, you can feel a change in the tides occurring. What was once a method that many called the death of movie theaters now just has people shrugging and going, I guess I'll watch Peter Pan and Wendy. You look at any streaming service and the movies they've released in the past year or so, and you begin to ask yourself, what's the point? Films like Spiderhead, Wedding Season, Me Time, Doggone, We Have a Ghost, Hollywood Stargirl, Sneakerella, Cheaper by the Dozen, Quasi, Sex Appeal, Infinite, Honor Society, Secret Headquarters were all released in the last year or so, and that's barely scratching the surface and... Have you seen any of these? Even big films like The Gray Man, Red Nose, and Six Underground have absolutely no one talking about them anymore despite Netflix saying they're the most watched things ever. And now, with films being released in theaters gaining more money than they have in the past three years, and studio heads at places like Warner Brothers, Sony, and Paramount saying the theatrical experience is the way films are meant to be seen, are there even going to be streaming movies anymore? Sure, Netflix is going to continue to finance $250 million plus films that they don't release in theaters until it finally kills them, because if there's one thing that Netflix is that isn't stupid, it's stubborn. But that begs the question, while the market has become so oversaturated over the past few years that you didn't even remember Amazon released The Tomorrow War, is there any value to streaming movies? Do streaming movies actually matter, or are they simply quote unquote content for said services? If we jump back in time to around 2015, streaming services were starting to gain far more popularity. With services like Netflix creating their own shows, it was only a matter of time before they made movies. And in October 2015, Netflix released their first movie, Beasts of No Nation. While Netflix didn't finance this film themselves, it was definitely a signal they meant business. The film was a critical darling and won dozens of awards at major film festivals and even went on to be nominated for a BAFTA for Idris Elba's performance. The future was looking bright, and then they turned right around and released The Ridiculous Six. With a whopping 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, this was Netflix's first movie they self-financed and it set a precedent for most of their movies going forward. See, for Netflix, it's never been about producing anything of quality, it's all about getting recognizable faces and a quarter way of a decent idea to make people go, eh, I've got nothing better to do, I guess I'll watch Adam Sandler movie number 43. But it wasn't until December of 2017 that changed everything for Netflix, and honestly films in general. Up until this point, aside from the Adam Sandler comedies, most of the films Netflix released they either bought from film festivals or were so small that Netflix didn't even remember they made them. Then, in 2017, Netflix released their biggest and most ambitious film to date, Bright. Starring Will Smith and directed by David Ayer, this film was significant not just for its insane price tag of $90 million, but because this was the first major blockbuster to be made only for a streaming service. This caused quite the stir in Hollywood and made many people wonder, will this be the future, or is this just a fluke in the system? Well, considering we got two tall girl movies out of this, I think the future is looking pretty bright. Released around Christmas, the film was destroyed by critics and had audiences pretty divided up, but given Netflix's strategy of put a big name person on the poster and people will watch, it did pretty damn good numbers wise. And thus began the hellish landscape we live in today. For the next several years, Netflix would continue to release mediocre movie after mediocre movie with a few bright spots here and there, mainly just to try to get some Oscars. While all this was happening, the only other major studio to produce their own movies was Amazon. Rather than take Netflix's approach and just release anything as long as there's a big name attached, Amazon actually wanted to seem like they had some brains and wanted to produce high quality stuff instead of being the Burger King of streaming services. With films like Manchester by the Sea, The Big Sick, and Honey Boy, Amazon more than proved their worth as a serious competitor to services like Netflix. And the biggest difference between the two is they actually viewed movies as art, not content. They put their movies in theaters, they released them on DVD, they actually gave a damn about them. Whereas now streaming services could give less than two pisses about viewing films as art, Amazon strangely did for the longest time. But just like the adventures of Jimmy Neutron, nothing good lasts forever. 2020, a series of numbers put together that everybody loves and has absolutely no problems with. So during a time of lockdown, people couldn't go out to the movies anymore and had to binge watch The Office all day long, but even that has its limits. Because of this, studios invested far more into streaming than ever before. 
From green lighting streaming only movies to selling blockbusters to streamers, studios were doing whatever they thought was the best solution to keep them afloat. This is a really weird time to look back on because films like The Lovebirds, The Tomorrow War, and The Mitchells vs. The Machines were all set to release in theaters in 2020, but got released on streaming services instead. It's very easy to tell during this time what was a film made by a streaming service and what was one that was sold to it, because you can actually see a difference in quality. Many streaming movies, particularly made by Netflix, just have the same look and feel to them. I don't know if it's because they try to churn them out as fast as possible, but it is very noticeable when it was a film made by Netflix and when it was one that was sold to them. For the next year or so, streaming services became the dominant force in distributors of movies. While theaters would be open in 2021, it was still an uncertain time, and not many people would go out to see a movie. So, services like HBO Max released their movies day and date in theaters and on their site because even they knew they needed to make money. Disney did a similar strategy, but you had to pay $30 if you wanted to watch the movie on Disney+, Plus because streaming Cruella was a privilege, not a right. HBO Max would go on to release things like the long-rumored four-hour cut of Zack Snyder's Justice League. While this was done mainly to build up a fan base for the platform, during this time streamers were doing whatever they could to stay afloat, even greenlining projects that were once said would never come to light. Sadly though, during this time, studios like Amazon took a dip in quality in what they would release. What was once the gold standard for what streaming movies could be, became just another site to watch movies from. While they would still release good films, they took the safer route to stay afloat, and that's not what made them so successful in the first place. While other streamers basically did the same thing and nothing changed for them, it felt like Amazon's relevancy with movies completely tanked during this time period. Even though this year they released the Ben Affleck directed movie Air, it doesn't carry the same weight as it would have back in 2017. Studios like Netflix would basically greenlight anything as long as there was a big name attached. Now it's shifted to what could be the next big franchise or a $100 million rom-com that doesn't show the price tag at all. Amazon went from prestigious dramas and thoughtful comedies to just another studio. Hulu, well, Hulu never really had an identity to begin with. Now it's just the babysitter for the Fox films that Disney doesn't want to put in theaters. Disney Plus is where Disney puts any live action family movie that they don't think will do well in theaters, over budgeted Disney Channel movies, or live action remakes that they know won't make money if they put in theaters. Apple is trying to be what Amazon was, but it really isn't catching on like they want to and Peacock, Max, and Paramount Plus exist. They'll release movies, but no one will ever know they exist. Once 2022 rolled around, the cracks really began to show. At this point, film studios and streaming services had created so much, and I hate saying this with a burning passion, content, that it didn't matter when they released a movie on them anymore. It wasn't seen as this big event like it once was, and it wasn't necessary anymore like it was back in 2020. Now, when you see Netflix release a movie starring Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg, you don't get excited because that's an hour and a half you can kill, you begrudgingly go along with it because your keys are too far away from your bed. However, because Top Gun Maverick hadn't come out to make studios realize the movies were back, there were still many that either released day and date, they changed being in theaters to just streaming like Turning Red and Luca, or they released on digital just two weeks after releasing in theaters. Because of these practices, studios weren't and still aren't seeing the numbers they once would because they effectively taught audiences to just wait for streaming. Hence, how films that once would have been huge like Lightyear and Strange World end up being box office bombs. A strange thing that's also been occurring is Disney putting a majority of Fox's films straight to Hulu, completely skipping the theatrical run. WHY?! What's the point of buying an entire studio if you're not even going to put their films in theaters to earn any money?! Practically every Fox film released on Hulu, no one has seen or heard of. For some goddamn reason, they even put the Predator prequel, Prey, straight to Hulu. WHAT?! I get the last film didn't do great, but considering the great word of mouth it got, I have a feeling it would have done pretty well if you put it in theaters. Whether they be original projects or remakes like White Men Can't Jump, if it's not something like Avatar or them wanting to get an Oscar with the Banshees of Inisherin, most likely, if Fox is going to distribute your film, it's going straight to Hulu. Then, as the icing on this shit cake, Discovery bought Time Warner in summer 2022 and they announced that they would be removing movies and shows from their services, most of them gone forever. Even the companies that make them realize they've made too much and have gained nothing from them, so they're just chucking them in the trash like it's two-week-old tuna salad. I mean, Red Notice is the film equivalent of that, but we can't let Dwayne Johnson know that. Films like Batgirl that were being made exclusively for HBO Max got completely cancelled despite being finished filming because they saw that they could save money by writing it off for taxes instead of releasing it on a platform that they wouldn't see a dime from. 
This has set a dangerous precedent that if you make something for a streaming service, you could most likely never see it again if it didn't get a million billion views. Films like American Pickle, Charm City Kings, Moonstruck, Lockdown, Artemis Fowl, Better Nate Than Ever, Clouds, Darby and the Dead, Magic Camp, and many others have all been removed from their sites with almost all of them having no way of watching them at all. Even the worst films and shows still have a right to exist and be viewable. No matter the quality of said project, every piece of art will be at least one person's favorite. Whether the film or show be the greatest thing ever or the worst thing ever, there's so much that can be learned and gained from it, but removing it and giving no other ways to be able to view it is the biggest middle finger you can possibly give to the creators that make your service even exist in the first place. So. Now we're in this weird point of, should streaming movies be made anymore? If studios are just going to greenlight them, only to remove them a few months later, why even take the chance in making them? Even movies like Evil Dead Rise that were supposed to go straight to streaming are starting to get theatrical only releases and they make bank because of it. We're starting to see comedy films come back to theaters and mid-budget films like Plane and 80 for Brady are making their triumphant return as well. It's evident that as the year goes on, studios are beginning to realize more and more that streaming was not the route to go. You don't make any money per project you release on the platform, you end up losing money because of it. Producing movies that cost over $100 million for a service where you won't see a dime of profit is an idea that got way farther than I think any of us realized it should. Even if a film only costs $20 million to make, that's still $20 million the studio will never make back. The more films you make that cost that much, the more the bill rises very quickly. You can rise streaming prices as much as you want, but it's never going to give you the profits that releasing the film in theaters would bring you. Even if a film that costs $40 million was released in theaters and only made $60 million, that's still the money being made back. On streaming, not only do you not get money back, now you're just going to remove it and piss everyone off. Look at the films released on streaming in the past year. Aside from a few standout ones like Prey and All Quiet on the Western Front, most of them went completely unnoticed by the masses. Films got to the point on streaming where they just became content and, unless Twitter made a big enough deal about it, no one cared enough to check them out. But look at the box office for 2022 and you can see that people longed for going back to the movies. Sure, not every film made the biggest amount of money, but imagine if Paramount released Top Gun Maverick on Paramount Plus instead of in theaters. Both Tom Cruise and the world would not have been happy with that announcement. But should streaming movies go away? When you release a movie to theaters, there's so many hands that get put onto the project at one point or another, and with focus group testings and dozens of other factors, films could ultimately change from how they were originally envisioned or just not exist at all. Many films starring and created by people in underrepresented groups like the Black, Asian, and Latino communities probably wouldn't be made by studios today because they still operate under bigoted mindsets that if it doesn't star a straight white man, it won't make money. Films created by the LGBTQ plus community would drop drastically and so many stories that need to be told would go unheard. But it's not just the kind of stories streaming makes possible to be told, it's also with how they're told. Most blockbusters these days have this stale, boring, and safe visual style to them that doesn't jolt people's imagination to life because it'd be considered too risky. But on streaming, you can take more chances and directors can express themselves in ways most studios wouldn't allow. As films at the box office stray farther and farther from smaller, more original films, streaming has been the one place to find movies aimed more at adults with more creativity and nuance than most major blockbusters. While studios don't see the benefit in a small $5 million movie bringing in, say, $10 million, streaming services will gladly put them on their sites, even if they rarely treat them like art. But exploring this shift is a topic for a video in its own right. However, None of this matters if the streaming services still only view these films as content. When they have this mindset in their heads, it makes it so they can put in as little effort into marketing the film as possible. Typically, unless it's something like The Gray Man, Netflix will release a trailer maybe two weeks before the movie comes out, and then they'll let Twitter do the rest. When this happens, so many movies get left by the wayside and all the efforts of the cast and crew go to waste. A great example is Netflix finished and released Orson Welles' Yes, the director of Citizen Kane, a fairly famous movie, 
his unfinished film, The Other Side of the Wind, and you hear no one talk about it because Netflix treated it like content rather than art. It's happened time and time again, and will probably continue to happen until these services finally die. Doing research for this video and collecting all these trailers, specifically for films that I've either never heard of or seen, showed me just how much these services have failed the creators of them. While every film may not be a masterpiece or has the greatest artistry behind it, at the end of the day, it's still people doing what they love. The way these services will greenlight just about anything, but then do almost nothing to get people's attention to it, is one of the most confusing things I've ever seen from Hollywood. Why throw all of this money at all of these stories, whether they be some of the most creative or generically boring stories out there, if you're not going to make people aware they exist? The longer these services made movies, the more you're able to see the decline in quality as they move farther away from more risky and experimental films in favor of blockbusters and movies with star power. While many of these films can be good, and these services still bring us Oscar-worthy films each year, it feels too few and far between when getting either a true artist vision or a movie of the week. Streaming was created with the idea of being a cable killer. It was the way to revolutionize TV, not just with no commercials and getting episodes all at once, but with the kinds of stories that could be told. Now, you didn't have to be just on HBO to make a mature show for adults. You didn't have to fit in the 40 minute runtime window. You could get budgets that were unseen at the time for TV. You could break boundaries and truly push what's capable with TV. But when it comes to movies, Streaming doesn't really offer anything that the theatrical experience wasn't providing. The budget stayed the same, the star power remained the same. If anything, being on streaming has hurt these films more than it's benefited them. If no one's aware of your existence, then what's even the point? The idea of being able to watch a movie anywhere at any time on paper isn't bad. But once these companies began to view movies as mere content that they can throw away whenever they feel like, that's when the simulation we call life should have hit reset. For decades, film was seen as one of the most accessible art forms there was. Being able to tell stories in ways that couldn't be done in any other medium, giving insight into others' lives, lifestyles, cultures, there was nothing else like it. But in recent years, the more and more companies like Netflix release generic film after generic film that it becomes impossible to distinguish what most of them are, it makes many wonder why even bother with movies. If studios can treat it as something to ignore and just throw away when they feel like it, then why should I even bother? There have been some amazing movies released on streaming services over the years. Whether they have been bought or sold to them or produced directly by them, we may have to sift through a lot of crap to find them, but when you find gems like Manchester by the Sea or Palm Springs, you're reminded of the good that can come out of these services. While there was a time when streaming was a cool novelty and then a necessity, I truly believe we're on the tipping point of streaming potentially collapsing in on itself. Producing these high budget films and seeing no profit in return is going to kill them in the end. Despite being excited for some films coming out and the possibilities of what streaming can do, I'd rather have the guarantee that art will survive rather than be forcefully taken away. It's been a fun ride, but if companies like Netflix don't change their ways, then I'm afraid all this wonderful art and Adam Sandler projects will become lost to time.